Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. He's a member of both the Intelligence and the Judiciary Committees. The Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. And I want to start by playing a little of what you've told me on the question of President Trump and collusion. Listen to this. You have to separate this from what you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. That's Bob Mueller's job. And just general collusion, which is offensive and concerning. I've seen plenty of evidence of collusion. We have very good circumstantial evidence that the Trump team, the family, the businesses were eager to work and were working with the Russians while the Russians uh, were helping them. And I think in the court of law, that's enough. So as you know, the, uh, according to the special counsel, Robert Mueller, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government. Are, are you ready, Congressman, to accept that conclusion from Robert Mueller? Uh, yes, uh, as it relates to criminal charges, uh, I thank Mr. Mueller for his work on behalf of the country, and, and I accept uh, that. But I think the clip you laid out uh, explains that just because you are criminally a non-colluder doesn't mean that we don't want to know what evidence Bob Mueller found about efforts you and your team and your family and your business took to work with the Russians. We have a counterintelligence interest for national security reasons, but also just on the Judiciary Committee, uh, recognizing that uh, we have a constitutionally equal uh, role to play to understand if that conduct is conduct that we want in a president. And so, Wolf, that's just a, a long way of saying, show us the Mueller report, not the Barr opinion. The Barr opinion is four pages long. It chronicles a nearly two-year investigation that had 2,800 subpoenas, 500 search warrants, and only used 84 words from Bob Mueller. We want to see every single word. So are you suggesting, Congressman, that uh, while there might not be enough evidence to establish a crime on the part of the president or others in the campaign involving collusion. There might be enough evidence to suggest uh, your activity in the House of Representatives beginning with impeachment. Well, I don't want to go there. I want to talk about counterintelligence uh, issues first. On the Intelligence Committee, we have to make sure any U.S. Per person, certainly all the way up to the president, uh, has not worked uh, with an adversary in a way that could jeopardize our national security. We've seen the evidence of... But let me interrupt for a second. Don't yeah. you think that uh, Robert Mueller and his team of uh, lawyers and FBI agents, if they had that kind of evidence, they would have presented it? Uh, they would have gone after those individuals? Oh, certainly. That's why we want to we see it. And, and we want to know if they do have that kind of evidence. And that evidence may not be, reach the highest standard in the law, proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, but it's still evidence we would want to see because we have seen just in public light uh, evidence of a person whose family took this meeting where the Russians offered dirt on his opponent, a candidate who asked the Russians to continue hacking. So we know there was an intent there to receive the help from the Russians. So let's know what Mueller saw that we did not see in public light. The uh, Trump uh, campaign has included your name on a list of, uh, of individuals, guests with uh, what they call credibility problems on this issue. You, you replied by saying this, and I'll read uh, what you said. The only person who has been caught lying about Russia is Donald Trump. And if he, if he thinks I've made a false statement, he can sue me and I'll beat him in court. Uh, so uh, what exactly did you mean by that? Well, the president uh, certainly lied when he said he had no business dealings as a candidate with Russia. We have now learned through Michael Cohen uh, and others that those dealings went all the way through the primary. Uh, why was he so dishonest with the American people about having business dealings with Russia while he was a candidate for president. But I challenge him, if, if he believes uh, that I'm not being truthful or that the other persons aren't being truthful, then sue us. I feel very comfortable uh, that uh, he would not win that case, just as he has lost most of the cases he brings uh, to court. Democrats uh, have accused the attorney general of rushing to judgment on the question of obstruction of justice. But CNN has learned that Robert Mueller told Bill Barr, the attorney the attorney general some three weeks ago that he wouldn't draw a conclusion on that specific obstruction issue. Uh, if the evidence didn't unequivocally convince Robert Mueller that a crime had been uh, committed, is it wishful thinking for Democrats to try and prove obstruction of justice? Well, again, our standard is different than proof beyond a reasonable doubt. You know, the president shouldn't be taking a victory lap that the best day of his presidency is that he was not charged with a crime. If he still committed offensive conduct that does not meet the conduct we want for our president, Congress has a constitutionally equal role to play to hold him accountable. That's why I think we should just see the report. But Wolf, I will note, what concerns me about the Attorney General making this decision and not the Special Counsel is the whole point of the Special Counsel was to act in a way that a conflicted political appointee 
by a subject of the investigation, the president, who's appointed Barr, could not. So the, the special counsel was supposed to make decisions that someone who has a conflict of interest could not. So I, I do want to learn more about why uh, the special counsel would give this authority uh, to uh, the attorney general. Well, do you think Mueller uh, meant to leave that question of obstruction of justice to the attorney general, or was he simply leaving it to you, members of Congress, to decide? If he meant to leave it to us, then we should see it. And if the president is so confident that he has been exonerated, then he should release immediately the full report. Senator Lindsey Graham issued this warning to Democrats today. I'll play the clip. Pursue what you think is important <clears throat> to the public. But if you keep going after Mueller spoke, people are going to think you're just out to get him that there is no right answer other than Donald Trump must be removed from office, and you'll proper, probably, probably suffer the same fate we did as having gone too far. So if you pursue this, uh, do you think a lot of Americans will think you are going too far? Do you risk, in other words, a, a backlash? No, and again, I respect what Bob Mueller did. I, I think Congress and the American people should see it. And I'll just point out to Senator Graham that I reached out to him over two years ago when I wanted to have an independent commission to take all of this outside of Congress and have experts and statespersons look at this rather than have a politically charged Washington do it. He didn't take me up on that offer. I only got two Republicans to sponsor my legislation. I've always thought that an independent commission is the best way to secure our ballot box and make sure that we're not attacked by the Russians again. You think that there's evidence that you would be able, members of Congress, to come up with that Mueller couldn't come up with, uh, and I'm looking now, uh, he had uh, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witness interviews, 500 search warrants, 230 orders for communication records, 40 FBI agents, a whole bunch of intelligence analysts, forensic accountants, other staff, 19 lawyers. What makes you think that the staff, your staff, either the Judiciary Committee or the Intelligence Committee, could come up with he clearly didn't come up with? I can't answer that question without seeing uh, who he interviewed and what he learned. And right now, my position is... We should know that uh, for the, the sake of you know, future elections that may be interfered with, for the sake of knowing whether a president and his team uh, worked with the Russians, maybe not in a criminally chargeable way, but a way that is offensive, we should know all of that. And again, I call on the president. If you are so innocent, if you are so clear, if you are so exonerated, then you should be so quick to put that report in the hands of Congress and the American people. Well, all of us want to see that information uh, as quickly as possible. Congressman Eric Swalwell, thanks so much for joining My us. My pleasure. All right, let's bring in on CNN Crime and Justice reporter Shimon Prokopez, our justice reporter Laura Jarrett, as well as our chief national security correspondent Jim Shudo. Laura, now let me read from the Barr letter, quoting Robert Mueller, the special counsel, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired or coordinated with the Russian government in its election interference activities. Uh, what, what do you make, and, and you went to law school, you understand this, you cover the justice A while ago. The use of the phrase, wasn't that long ago, <laughs> the use of the phrase did not establish. So it's a notable line that you've cued in on here, and I think it's important to remember, Mueller's looking at this not just as an investigator, he's looking at this as a prosecutor. And so these lines actually are kind of terms of art. So when he says did not establish, to me, I read that as did not have sufficient evidence to prosecute beyond a reasonable doubt. That's a different standard than members of Congress are bringing, as Congressman Swalwell just mentioned, uh, for his investigative purposes. It's a, it's a different issue. But what he's saying here is I looked at the case and I couldn't get there. And you can see from footnote one, he even assessed potential conspiracy charges. So it's not as if they didn't look at the waterfront here, had all of the evidence in front of them, but they didn't see a case to be made. And it's also speaks to why it's going to be so important to see the full report, because as you can see from the brackets there, we don't know what came before the first part of that clause. And so we have to see what did he say about all the evidence that he saw, but yet nevertheless, he couldn't get We there. want to see the full report and all <laughs> those course. words. Clearly important. Shimon uh, Mueller's team actually notified the Attorney General Bill Barr three weeks ago that uh, he would not be able to reach a conclusion on whether or not the president uh, uh, obstructed justice. So what's the significance of that? So it's essentially it's it's to tell us that Bill Barr didn't just make this decision on his own in the two days that he was reviewing this report. We it's essentially saying that the Department of Justice, Bill Barr, the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, all knew this was coming. Uh, they knew this was going to be part of what Robert Mueller was going to put in their report. 
Certainly, I think the issue that uh, some folks did not expect him to not come to a conclusion on the obstruction issue, uh, you know, could have been a little bit surprising. But I don't think ultimately they came into this over the weekend, Bill Barr and his team surprised at, at the outcome of this investigation. The hardest part for them, it would seem, and Laura knows this better because she spent the entire weekend there, <laughs> um, was figuring out what to tell us. How much do we, do they tell us? And they've told us a lot, and I think they're going to continue to try and do their best to get more information to us.